This mini lecture, uh, reducing to lowest terms, is going to call on the uh, skills we've learned in the last several lectures of doing inverted division and divisibility rules and product of primes uh, to help us reduce these fractions to lowest terms. So what we're going to be doing is putting the numerator and the denominator into the same division problem. Notice that the numerator goes on the left side and the denominator on the right side. Then we're going to begin with our list of prime numbers, which if you'll recall are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on, and divide by these primes in order from smallest to largest, choosing only those primes that will fit into both our numerator and our denominator. So to reduce the fraction 21 36 we begin by looking at the, the factor of 2. Now since 2 won't fit into 21, because 21 is even, we're going to skip that one and go on to 3. 3 does fit into 21 and also fits into 36. So we'll put it on the outside as our divisor and then divide each one of the numbers in the same division symbol. 3 fits into 21 7 times and 3 fits into 36 12 times. Looking back at our list of primes, we notice that 7 is a prime number. That means the only number that 7 will divide by is 7 and itself. And since 7 does not fit evenly into 12, we have divided the numbers 221 and 36 by as many divisors as they have in common. This means that the remaining digits that we have left, the 7 and the 12, are our reduced fraction. So by putting a fraction bar between them, we have the reduced fraction. Therefore, 21 36 is equal to 7 twelfths. This contrasts to the way that your textbook does this problem. Um, and if you've learned the way that the textbook does it, it's absolutely fine to continue that. Um, I find this other method, once you're used to it, to be quicker, um, especially as the numbers get larger. The way that your textbook addresses this problem is they have you factor each one of the parts of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, separately. So they factor the 21 into a 3 times 7, and the 36 into a 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. Um, and I don't believe that they really show a lot of examples of how they arrived at that answer. Um, you could get there using short division to divide by your primes um, until, your pro until your answer is a prime number. Then they show that since the 3 thirds is a factor that both the numerator and denominator have in common, it can be eliminated, leaving you with 7 over 3 times 2 times 2. You then need to multiply those factors on the bottom back together, returning you to 12. So you'll notice that our answers do come out the same. Um, I see this one as being quicker because uh, it doesn't have you doing the extra factors for 36 that you end up not being able to eliminate and therefore having to recombine in the answer. So let's look at this again with the second example. 24 40 seconds. To reduce that to lowest terms, I'm going to put the 24 and the 42 into the division machine. I start with 2 since both my numerator and denominator are even numbers. It fits into 24 12 times and into 42 21 times. Since one of my divisors is now an odd number, or I'm sorry, one of my dividends is now an odd number, I can no longer divide by 2. So I recall the rule for 3's. Since 3 is a multiple of 12 and also a multiple of 21, I'm going to divide by 3 next. 3 fits into 12 4 times and into 21 7 times. Once again, 7 is a prime number. And since it does not fit evenly into 4, this fraction is fully reduced.
So 24 40 seconds is equivalent to 4 sevenths. The textbook method again for this problem would show 24 40 seconds factoring into 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and 42 factoring into 2 times 3 times 7. When the 3's and 2's are eliminated, this method also leaves you with a two 2's on the top, which combine to form a product of 4, and a 7 on the bottom. And you'll notice once again that the results match. Our last example has us reducing the fraction 162 50 fourths. Placing both of these side by side in the division machine, has me dividing by 2 first, since both numbers are even. 162 becomes 81, and 54, 27. Since 2 fits into 5 once, with a remainder of 1. 81, with a sum of 8 plus 1 being 9, and 27, 2 plus 7 also being 9, tells me that both of these numbers will divide by 3. 3 fits into 8 twice, with 2 remaining, and into 21 7 times. 3 fits into 27 9 times. Both of these numbers are multiples of 3, so I will divide by 3 a second time, and then a third time. So the fraction 162 20 fourths is equivalent to the fraction 3 ones or 3. There are two further examples for practice on this concept. So get out a blank piece of paper here and do these as well. 60 70 seconds and 17 50 once. Remember again that we're going to be doing these by dividing only by primes, starting with our smallest prime and working our way up the list until our result has at least one of the factors as prime. Dividing these first two by two, because they're both even, will leave us with 30, and two fitting into seven, three times with one remaining, and 12, six times. Two even numbers has us again dividing by two. Two fits into 30, 15 times, and into 36, 18 times. I now have an odd number, so I can't use 2 anymore. But since 15 and 18 are both multiples of 3, I will now divide by 3. And 3 fits into 15 5 times and into 18 6 times. 5 is a prime number, and it's not a multiple of 6. So this fraction is fully reduced, leaving us with the result that 60, 70 seconds is equivalent to 5 sixths. Our final example gives us the numbers 17 and 51. This is the problem I see students missing most often on exams because if you look at our list of primes you'll notice that 17 is on that list of primes. So the only number that's going to fit evenly into 17 is 17. So if 17 will fit into 51, this fraction can be reduced. If it won't fit into 51, the fraction cannot be reduced. Now I don't know about you, but I don't have my 17 times tables memorized. So I'm going to look at the 51 first. Looking at 51, I notice that 5 plus 1 is a sum of 6. So I know 51 is not a prime number because it will divide by 3. 
Doing some scratch work on the side, I discover that 3 fits into 51 exactly 17 times. So it is, in fact, a 17 times table. So coming back up here to my original problem, I'm going to divide both 17 and 51 by 17. 17 fits into 17 one time, and according to my scratch work below, it fits into 51 three times. So the fraction 17 51ths is equivalent to one third. And that is the final example in your lesson on reducing to lowest terms.